Well, we'll do an example, the very next example in the book, since that's the, the type of thing you were looking at. So, uh, and again, I'm just going to demonstrate how to do the problem. Uh, but first of all, you should, you should get a feel for what's going on. So why don't you read um, the opening, uh, the problem for example 2-4, and when you have a mental picture of that, we'll just go through it together. So it helps to uh, draw some pictures of what's going on here. So the initial position is when the motorist passes the police car. Now, we know that at the beginning, the police car was at rest. I think they told us that when it was first passed, the, uh, yeah, they said it was a stationary police car. So initially, the police car is at rest. Let's write it like this. What does that tell you about the police car's velocity at the start? When they said that the police car was initially stationary, that means it started with a zero velocity. Um, however, we know that the motorist was, was, was moving. And we'll, I'm just assuming that they were moving to the right. So I'll say that in the original picture, the police car looked like this, and the motorist had this velocity. All right, uh, but then the police car is upset that the motorist is speeding, and they go heading after them. So how should I draw the velocity vector for the police car now? Is the velocity vector for the police car now left, right, or zero? And how about the motorist, left, right, or zero? So, uh, by the way, I'm not going to worry about, I'm not trying to compare the lengths of these arrows. I'm just trying to get the directions. Oftentimes, all we really care about is direction. I'm not trying to be too careful about the lengths. But I'm just trying to show that both of these now are moving to the right. But initially, of course, the police car is behind the motorist, because the motorist kind of had a head start. right? So this is, say, our middle position. Or actually, maybe I should, uh, well, no. All right, however, um, the police car is going to keep speeding up until they catch the motorist, right? That's the whole point of the problem. So the final position the final position has to look like this. Now the two dots are at the same location, pretty much. So, but when it catches up to the motorist, it's still moving, right? Yeah. When the officer catches up to the speeder, how far down the road is it? Well, that's implying that we just want to run this experiment until they're at the same position. Now, presumably, if we use our common sense, now the police car is going to turn on its siren and force the motorist to slow down and come to a halt, but that's not part of the story. All the story is covering is um, the instant that the police car has caught up to the motorist. Well, at the instant that it's caught up to the motorist, they're still both moving. So at the instant that they're caught up, they're still both going to be moving to the right. All right, so different people would draw different types of pictures here, but this is the type of picture I would draw. One thing that's really crucial in this class is we, we, want, we don't want to be lazy. We should try to draw a picture for every problem. That's something that the textbook, your textbook does a pretty good job for. Every single problem, they try to draw some type of picture. In this problem, though, they drew a graph, which I think is less intuitive. So I just tried to draw a, a concrete picture. 
Um, but you should try to do that for all the kinematics problems that you're doing. Draw the picture. Um, it's well worth taking the time to do that, to get a clear mental picture of what's going on here. And sometimes you have to be imaginative to come up with a picture. Here we really needed three pictures. Three pictures so that we really had a clear idea in our minds of everything that was going on. So this is not a mechanical process. Um, you have to use your judgment here. All right, so now we have a basic picture of um, what's going on. And we should try to label these as much as possible. Eh, should we try to put anything more in the picture? Eh, I don't know if I'm going to try to put any numbers in the picture. Maybe this is good enough. All right, now um, I think I'm going to try to choose a positive direction, though. What would be a logical positive direction here? Yeah, so I'm going to label. I'm not going to bother with the y-axis. I'm just going to say that the x-axis is to the right. All right, so now we've done uh, basically step one and uh, step two. Mm -hmm. But in terms, we didn't do an axis, like, or did we? This is the axis. Okay, but it looks a little the... weird because we left out the y portion. We only drew the x portion. But it's still an axis. Okay. In terms of setting like that point equal to zero where it all starts. Right. Oh, yeah, you can try to um, build, build this more in detail. You can call this the zero point. That's fine. Well, whatever makes sense to you. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Actually, something I did leave out is I didn't show the acceleration vectors. So maybe we should put that in. What can we say about the motorist's acceleration? You might need to go back and reread the problem. What can so, we say about the motorist acceleration? Actually, I think they were a little ambiguous about they that. They didn't tell us, but right. it said he was speeding through. So if he's speeding, then his acceleration has to be parallel to his velocity. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. When they say he's speeding, they just mean that he's breaking the speed limit. Okay. But that doesn't mean that he's... Um, remember, the acceleration is going to tell us here whether he's speeding up, slowing down, or going at constant speed. Now, the problem was not really specific about this, so we're going to have to make an inference. Does it seem like they're implying that the speeder is speeding up, slowing down, or going at constant speed? They were, they were kind of ambiguous, but what's the most reasonable assumption? Okay, maybe we'd have to say the question is kind of ambiguous. They, they mean to imply here that the, the motorist is going at a constant speed. What, what speed is he going at? 75 yeah. How do I know that's constant? Well, if it's not constant, there's no way to solve the problem. I mean, if he's speeding up, they didn't tell us how fast he's speeding up. So we have no idea. We don't have nearly enough information to solve the problem. Sometimes you have to make an assumption that's necessary to solve the problem. So the question was a little bit ambiguous here, but they meant us to assume that they were going at a constant speed. Notice that they, uh, yeah, the, the constant speed of 75 kilometers per hour. So we're assuming a constant speed. Yeah. Which means that A equals zero. Right for the motorist. And that's going to be true in all the pictures for the motorist. The question was a little ambiguous, but they're implying that the motorist is going at a constant speed. Okay. All right, and when we're ready, we'll have to see what are they telling us about the police car's acceleration. The police car, well, if it starts at rest and then it goes, then it's definitely going to have a positive acceleration. Uh, let's see. I, I think you're on the right track there. But let's focus a little bit more on the direction of the acceleration. What direction should I draw the acceleration vector in? To the right. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Because is the police car speeding up or slowing down? Speeding. Yeah. Well, since the velocity is to the right, the acceleration has to be parallel to that. So the acceleration should also be to the right. So throughout, the police car is going to be accelerating to the right because their velocity is to the right and they want to be speeding up so that they can catch up to the motorist. So now we've really built more information into our pictures. We put both the velocity and the acceleration. Okay. All right, we've got our axis. Um, again, we don't need to do step three. We don't need to break things into components because there's only the horizontal component. So now we're ready to write down the kinematics variables. Now, ah, so remember that we saw that there's two different types of problems. 
there are zero acceleration problems and non-zero acceleration problems. So can we treat the police and the motorist as two different problems? That's right. That's what we're going to do. So which is which? Um, for example, is the, uh, is the motorist going to be a zero acceleration problem or a non-zero acceleration problem? Zero. That's what we did all that work to figure out. That was really only implied, but that's what we said they were implying. So what approach do we use there? What equation? The, um, 